Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> welcome, esteemed colleagues. That's what I meant, esteemed colleagues. Okay. I'm Dr. Carroll. And I'm Dr. Clark. I'm the executive director here at the Elsinore Asylum for Women. Um, as stated in your official invitations, you've all been invited because of your work in the psychiatric field. It's the time when we release one girl, and you've been asked here to help assess and find out who's most fit. Yes. And since art is the best expression of these girls' deepest neurosis, we've asked them to put on a play for you. They chose Hamlet. Aren't you excited? They updated the script themselves. And you just might see Dr. Clark and Dr. Carroll in it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, please remember to stay seated at all times. Uh, all these girls have a history of violence. Um, and we have done everything we can to ensure your safety. One thing, one girl has a cell phone trigger, and <laughs> it would be much safer here if yeah, everyone's cell phones were off, including a vibrator. <coughs> the vibrate trigger is especially strong for this one woman. Um, as I said, we have done everything we can to ensure your safety. If we need you to move, we will do. Use, we will tell you, and please move quickly out this emergency door. Get out with the mission. <laughs> <laughs> as I said. Please remember you are here to declare one of these girls sane. We really appreciate your help. Now, enjoy the show. Thank you. Now, now I am alone. Um. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. I is it not monstrous that this player here, um, in, in, a, in a fiction, um, in a dream of passion, could could force her soul so to her own conceit that from her working all her visage wand tear tears tears in her eyes a distraction in her aspect a broken voice for nothing. What would she do H had she the, the cue and the motive for passion that, that I have? Like, well, she would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, like John of Dreams, peak, unworthy of my cause and can say nothing. Alas, no. for a king, upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I coward? Huh? Who calls me villain? Breaks my pain across, fucks off my beard, blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the lie the throat as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this, huh? <laughs> as soon as I should take it for, cannot be, but I am pigeon livered, and like gall to make oppression bitter. Else I should have fatted off all the region kites with the slaves off. Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Cruel vengeance. 
Hey, this is most brave, huh? That I, the, the child of the dear mother murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words, fall cursing like a, like a dread, or scully you. I have heard the guilty creatures sitting in a play have, have by the cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they proclaimed all their malfactions. For murder, though I'd have no tongue, will speak with miraculous organ. Now I'll have these players play something like the, the, the murder of my mother before my auntie. I'll observe her looks. I'll touch her. If she but blanch, I know my course. After all, the play is the thing. But I'll catch the conscience of this new king. Kingy! that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wisest sorrow think on her together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, and the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we as twere with a defeated joy with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, an equal scale weighing delight and dole, taken to wife. Nor have we here in barred your better wisdoms which have freely gone with this affair along, for all our thanks. But now my cousin Hamlet and my girl. Hmm, little more than kin, less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Oh, no, not so, lady. I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet. Cast thy lighted color off, and let thine eye look as a friend on Elsinore. <laughs> Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble mother in the dust. Though knowst is common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, mother, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? <sighs> seems. Madam, nay, it is. I know not seems. It is time to load my inky cloak, good mother. Nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of force and breath, nor the fruitful river of the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all moods, forms, shapes of grief that denote me truly. These indeed may seem, for they are actions of man like play, but I have that within which passeth show these to be the the suits and the trappings of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your mother. But you must know, your mother lost a mother, that mother lost, lost hers, and the survivor bound in filial obligation to do some obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is, of course, an impious stubbornness. Tis unseemly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. Tis a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason most absurd, whose common theme is death of mothers, and who still hath cried from the first course till she that died today. That this must be so. We, pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of me as ever mother. For your intent in transferring back to Wittenberg is most retrograde to our desire. 
and we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our girl. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet, I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall with all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart, in grace whereof free speaking earthly thunder come away. <laughs> this too, too solid flesh would melt. <laughs> but thaw, resolve itself into a Jew, or, or that the elder lasting had not fixed his cannon against self slaughter. visit her face too roughly. In heaven and earth must I remember. I wish she would hang, as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on, and yet within a month. I mean, I think I had <laughs> frailty, thy name is woman. <coughs> A month for ere those shoes were old with which Gertrude followed her wife's <coughs> body. Like Naomi, all tears. A little month. She, even she, a god, a beast that was discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my aunt. And no more to my mother than I have fucked Oprah. Month, or ere the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she marries. Is that or it cannot come to any good? And hey, break my heart. I must hold my tongue. I am glad to see thee well, Horatia, before I do forget myself. <laughs> I am very glad to see you. <laughs> Good even girl, but what in faith make you from Wittenberg? <laughs> A true in disposition, good girlfriend. <laughs> I would not hear your enemy say so. Yeah. Nor shall you do my near the violence to make a truster of your own report against yourself. I know you're no turrent. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. <laughs> Came you to see your mother's funeral? <laughs> <laughs> really, do not mock me, fellow inmate. <laughs> Was rather so a mother's wedding. Oh, indeed, lady, it followed hard upon us. Oh, thrift, thrift, Horatia. The, uh, the funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. <laughs> what I've been seeing my mother in heaven, I had ever seen that day. Lady, I think I saw her yesterday. You saw, you saw who? Girl, I saw Mother King. You saw Mother King. Mm -hmm. Two nights together have I gone out late, and the dead vast in the middle of the night been thus encountered a figure like your mother appears before me, 
and with solemn march go slow and stately by, whilst I, distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to it. I knew your mother, and these hands are not more alike. It's very strange. As I lived, tis true. And I didn't think it writ down in my duty to let you know of it. Oh, indeed, this troubles me. Uh, Horatia, saw you on her face? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Uh, pale or red? Nay, very pale. I would have been there. Uh, stayed it long? Till one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. I'll watch tonight. It, perchance it will walk again. I warrant it will. I will requite your loves. Uh, so fare you well in the surveillance room. Twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Your love is mine to you. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> My, my necessaries are embarked farewell, and sister, as the winds give benefit and the convoy is assisted, do not sleep but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, <laughs> and the trifling of her favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature. Forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more but so. Think it no more, for nature crescent does not grow alone in Thu's involved, but as this temple waxes, the inward service of the mind and soul grows wide with all. Perhaps she loves you now, and now no soil nor coddle doth besmirch the virtue of her will, but you must fear. Her greatness weighed her will is not her own, for she herself is subject to her birth. Then Weigh what loss your honor may sustain, if with too an ear you list her songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure, open to her unmastered importunity. You cannot speak of reason to me, and lose your voice. What wouldst thou be? That shall not be my offer, not thy asking. The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth. Fie on it! Speak plain, Laertes! Fear it! <laughs> Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. Keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. The cheeriest maid is prodigal enough if she unmask her beauty to the moon. Virtue itself scapes not calumnious strokes. The, the canker galls the infants far too off before their buttons be disclosed, and in the morn and liquid dew of youth, contagious blastments are most imminent. Be wary then, best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my sister, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, herself the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not her own reed. No, not again. <laughs> oh, fear me not. I stay too long, but here Polonia comes. <laughs> but here Polonia comes. A double blessing and a double graze. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. <laughs> Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for stream. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, but you are stayed for. There. Oh, <laughs> uh, my blessing with thee, and these few precepts in thy memory see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Give every man thy ear, but few thy tongue. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Uh, for, oh, uh, costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich not gaudy. For the, oh, okay. the apparel oft proclaims the girl, <laughs> neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, mm -hmm. and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self true. <laughs> There, my blessing season this in me. I most humbly take my leave, Polonia. <laughs> Farewell, Ophelia. Remember well what I have said to you. 
is in my memory box, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. <laughs> What is it, Ophelia? She had said to you. So please do something touching upon Hamlet. Very well be thought. Tis told me she had very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your favors been most free and bounteous, if it is true, as so tis put on me, and that by way of caution I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly. What is between you? Give me up the truth. She hath, Polonia, as of late, made many tenders of her affections to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak Ugh. like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe her tenders, as you call them? I do not know, Polly, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby that you have taken for true pay these tenders, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly. Or, not to catch the wind of the poor, poor phrase running at thus, you'll tender me a fool. Molly, she hath importuned me with love in an honorable fashion, and hath given countenance to her speech with almost all the holy vows of heaven. What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. By sprinches to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood boils how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, little one, giving more light than heat, extinct in both, even as their promise, as it is a making, you must not take for fire. From this time, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher cost than a command to parley. For that Hamlet, believe so much in her that she is young, and with a larger tether may she walk than may be granted you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe her vows, for they are brokers, not of that dye which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits, breathing like sanctified and pious bods, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not, from this time forward, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk to young Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. I shall. Oh, it's very cold. Humid. The <laughs> air bites shrewdly. You think you're in eager air. Look how many it comes. Oh, angels and ministers of grace defense. What if it tempted toward the flat hamlet, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles or his base into the sea, and there assume some other horrible form and might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it. The very place of those toys of desperation without more motive into every brain that looks so many fathom to the sea and hears your roar beneath. As you have ever a friend, mm -hmm. fellow inmate scholar, grant me one more request. Oh, never, never. Go on. I'll hear thee. You shall not hear, Hamlet. She waxes desperate with imagination. To what issue will this come? Murder. Murder. 
most foul. As in the best it is. But this most foul? Strange and unnatural. Now, Hamlet, here, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. But no, noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy mother's life now wears her crown. My prophetic soul, Claudia! I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of her wit with treacherous gifts, Wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce. One to her shameful lost the will of seeming virtuous Gertrude. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there. For me, whose love was of that dignity, that it went hand to hand, even with the vow that I'd made to her in marriage. And to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. in a shape of heaven so lost, though to Arabian angel linked will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. Now hear this. I sleep in my orchard, as was my custom in the afternoon. Upon my secure hour, thy auntie stole with juice of cursed haven on in a vial, and in the porches of my ear did pour that leprous distillment. Just 
shatter all her bulk and then her being. And when that done, she lets me go. Then, with her head thus or her shoulder turned, she seemed to just find her way without her eyes, for out of doors she went without their halts until the last bend of their light on me. Come with me, I will see Claudia. This is the very ecstasy of love, whose violent property foredoes itself and leads the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that does afflict our natures. I am sorry. What, have you given her any hard words of late? No, Claudia. But as you did command, it did repel her fetters and deny her access to me. Well, that has made her mad. I am sorry that with better heated judgment I had not quoted her. I feared she did but trifle and meant to wreck thee. But beshrew my judgment. By heaven, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions as it is for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go we to Claudia. This must be known, which, being held close, might give more grief to hide than hate to utter love. <laughs> dear Guildenstern, so dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, <laughs> something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it? Sith, nor the exterior, nor the inward girl resembles what it was, what it could be more than death that thus hath put her so far from the understanding of herself I cannot dream of. So, by our companies to draw her on to pleasure, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether ought to us unknown afflicts her thus, that, opened, lies within our remedy. Mm -hmm. Gentle doctors, she hath much talked of you, and sure I am, too, there are not living to whom she more adheres. If it so please you to show us so much gentry and goodwill as to expend your time with her a while for the supply and profit of our hope. Thanks, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. And I beseech you instantly, go visit my change of daughter. Heavens, make our presence and practices pleasant and useful to her. <laughs> I do believe, God willing, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That do I long to hear. But this business is well ended. My liege and madam, to expostulate on what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night night, and time time were nothing but to waste, night day and time. <laughs> um, therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness its limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Noble, noble Hamlet is mad. Mad call I it, for to describe true madness, what is it but to be? Nothing else but mad. <laughs> but let that go. <laughs> More matter, with less art. Madam, I swear. I use no art at all. <laughs> that she is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity, and pity tis, tis true. Ugh, a foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. <laughs> that she is mad, let us grant her. Then it remains that we find the cause of this effect. Uh, or rather the cause of this defect, for this effect defective comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus. <laughs> Perpend. <Okay. clears throat> mm. Machine is to sell. Hamlet. Mm. 
This in obedience hath Ophelia given me, and more above hath her solicitings as they fell out by time, by means, and by place, all given my ear. But how hath Ophelia received her love? What do you think of me? A woman, faithful and honorable. Hmm. Thus I advised, and precepts gave her, that she should lock herself away from this resort, admit no tokens, uh, accept no messengers. This done, she took the fruits of my advice, Hamlet repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, thence into a watch, thence into a weakness, thence into a lightness, and then, by that declension, into the madness wherein she now reigns. <laughs> oh, and all we mourn. But how may we try it further? You know, sometimes Hamlet walks for hours together here in the lobby. <laughs> he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose Ophelia to her. Be you and I behind an arras then? Mark the encounter. We will try it. But look, where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you all, away. Yeah. Not I, lady. Yeah. Would you were so honest. Well, honest, Hamlet? Aye, aye. To be honest is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's true, lady. If the sun breeds maggots and a dead dog being a god kiss and carry in it. Have you a daughter? I have, Hamlet. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception may be a blessing, but not as, as if Ophelia conceive. Friend, look to it. Still harping on Ophelia, yet she knew me not at first. She thought I was a fishmonger. What do you read? What is the matter? But between who? I mean the matter that you read. Slanders. For the satirical rogue says here that uh, the, that old women have mustaches, that their faces are wrinkled and ugly, and their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. How pregnant her replies sometimes are. I will leave her and go conceive the means of meeting between her and Ophelia. Honorable Hamlet, I most humbly take my leave of you. You could not dare take from me anything I would more willingly part with all. Oh. <laughs> Except my life. 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 Come in. To visit you, Hamlet, no other occasion. Oh, well, beggar as I am, I, I humbly thank you, but 
Uh, I'm even poor. Thanks. Uh, is it your own claim? Is it a free visitation? Come, come, Nay. Deal justly with me. Come, Nay, but speak. What should we say, Hamlet? Well, anything but to the point. You are sent for. And there is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know. Claudia and Gertrude have suffered you. To what end, Hamlet? Well, that you must teach me. Be even and direct with me. Were you sent for or no? What say you? <laughs> we were sent for, Hamlet. I will tell you why. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forborn all custom of exercise, and indeed a hang so heavily upon my disposition that to me this goodly friend, the earth, why it seems no other but a, a, a sterile prometer, this most excellent canopy. Look up! <gasps> <laughs> there! Why it seems a foul and pestilent congregation of virus. What a piece of work is man! How no will it him! How infinite in faculty! In form and moving, how express and admirable! <laughs> oh. In action, how like a god! In apprehension, how like an ant <laughs> And yet, what amazes that quit us as a dust? <laughs> no. Man delights not me. No, nor woman neither. I can tell by your smile you seem to say so. And to think, if you delight not in man what Lenten entertainments the players shall receive from you, <laughs> we coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer your service. Ah, what, what, what players are they? <laughs> those you were one to take delight in? The tragedians of the city. Are they still held in the same estimation as they were when I was in the city? Are they still followed? No, indeed they are not. Well, how comes it? Grow like rusty? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there was for a time no money bid for argument. Uh. So poets and the player went to caption the question. Mm. There has been much throwing about of brains. Hamlet, I have news to tell you. The actors are coming hither. Woo! Buzz, buzz. Then came each actor on his own ass. The best actors in all the world, either for tragedy, com comedy, pastoral, historical, pa <laughs> pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, pastoral, historical, Comical, scene undivided, or poem unlimited. Oh, good, sweet masters, you are so welcome. Do you hear? <laughs> oh, yeah, will you see them well bestowed? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear? Treat them well, for they are the chronicle and express admiration of the time. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. Oh, God's pockets, Polly, much better. Use every man after his dessert, and who should escape whipping, huh? <laughs> Unless you're into that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Dost thou hear, old friend? Canst thou play the murder of Gonzaga? What we'll happened tomorrow night? Good doctors, I leave you till tonight. <laughs> God be with thee. Oh, and also with thee. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, by no drift of circumstance, get from her why she puts on this confusion, grating so harshly all her days of quiet with dangerous and turbulent lunacy? She does confess she feels herself distracted, but from what cause she will by no means speak. Nor do we find her forward to be sounded, but with crafty men this keeps aloof when we would bring her to some confession of her true state. <laughs> Did you assay her to any pastime? Madam, it so turned out that certain players we have overrun on the way. Of these we told her, and there did seem in her a kind of joy to hear of it. They're about the court, and as I think, they already have orders this night to play before. Tis most true! 
again, she did beseech me to entreat you both to hear and see the matter. With all my heart. <laughs> and it doth much content me to hear her so inclined. Good doctors, both. Give her further edge and draw this purpose on to these desires. We shall, Claudia. <laughs> Whether tis nobler than the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and not to die, to sleep no more. And with a sleep to say, we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, it is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep. Which is to dream. Aye. There's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? Just give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would suffer the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love. The law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardens bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread something after death? undiscovered country from whose bore no travelers return. Puzzles a little. Makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly off in search of those we hear not of. Because conscience does make cowards of us all, eh? And thus the Native hue of resolution is sickly doer with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith, great moment. With this the regard, the currents turn awry and lose the name of action. But soft you now. Sons be all my sins remember. Good Hamlet. How does your honor this many a day? Good Hamlet, thank you. Well, well, well. Lady, I have remembrances of yours that I have long longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. words of so sweet breath composed to make the thing more rich. Its perfume is lost. Take it again. To the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor and givers true and kind. There. <laughs> Are you honest? My dear. Are you fair? What means you, lady? If you be honest and fair, your honor. 
honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my dear, have better commerce than with all... Oh, I truly! But the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to that of a bond! Before the force of honesty can translate beauty to its likeness. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. That was the more deceit. <laughs> Get thee to a nunnery? Why, wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? Huh? I am myself indifferent, honest, and yet I could accuse me of such things that were better my mother had not borne me. Watch your fellows such as I do, crawling twixt heaven and earth. Or Aaron Dave's all believe none of us. Go that way. Where's your precious Polly? At home, Emily. Uh -huh. Let the door be shut on her. That she may play the fool nowhere else but in her own room. To another book. Heavenly powers restore. Oh, I have heard of your paintings too. God gives you one face and you make yourselves another. You nickname God's creatures. You jig, you owl, you lisp, and you make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to! I've no one on it! It made me mad. I say, we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already, right, oh, I'll, I'll say one, shall live. And let the rest keep his name. Too unlovely. Her melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger. For which to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. What think you want? It? it shall do well, but yet do I believe the origin and commencement of this grief came by neglected love. How now, Ophelia, you need not tell us that which Hamlet said. We heard it all. Claudia, do as you please, but... If it fit you, after the play, have her mother entreat her all alone to show her grief. Let Gertrude be round with her, and I'll be placed, if it please you, in the ear of all their conference. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. How now, lady? 
Will the king see this piece of work? And the queen too, and that presently. Oh, good. scene of which comes very near the circumstance which the king told me of mother. The king's death. Pray, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe mine auntie. Her occulted guilt do not itself, and I cattle at one speech from his damned ghost I have seen. My imaginations are as black as Vulcan Sydney. Well, lady, if she steal out the whilst this play is playing and scape detecting, I'll pay the theft. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent, well! Of the chameleon's dish, I eat the air. Promise, Grand. You cannot feed the capon, so. I have nothing with this Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, no, my neither. Now, my lady. Shall I lie in your lap? No, my lady. Do you think I'm in country manners? I think nothing, my lady. Oh, that is a fair thought to lie between maid's legs. inclination be sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand in pause, where I should first begin in both neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with sister's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me! My foul murder. I cannot be. Since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown. My own ambition. And my queen. May one be pardoned and retain the offense. Wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, mine soul that's struggling to be free art more engaged. Help, angels! Make a say! Audio rises. Ooh, what? Friday with false fire. Oh, there's my love. Give Ower the play. Give me some light. Oh, wait! Oh, going to race you out. Take that ghost to her for a thousand pounds. So, 
Darcy. Very well. The bottom top of the poison. I did very well, Milt. <laughs> to your own liberty if you deny your grief to your friend. Doc, I lack advancement. You play fun this way? Hey, I cannot. No. <laughs> How are you? Come on. Leave me, Hamlet. I cannot. So <laughs> blood. Do you think I'm easier to be played upon than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will. Though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. And now, I will to my mother. Bye. 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 to bear with. I'll sconce me if you're here. Pray you, be round with her. I warned you, fear me not. We'll withdraw, Mother. she's on. Mother. Hello, Mother. What's the matter? Oh, now, Hamlet, have you forgot me? Oh, no, by the rule, not so. You are the queen. Your uh, wife's sister's wife? Yeah. And uh, were I thought so, you are our mother. Nay, then, I'll set those to you that can speak. You shall not move. You shall not budge until I have set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! 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 Oh, how now? A rat? Huh? Dead for a ducket! Dead! Ah, here, oh. ah. No, I want to take it. Okay, I can't. Ah. Sit you down. I will 
wring your heart if it be made of penetrable stuff. If... Damn, custom had not brass to send his proof against God. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue and be so rude against me? Look, you, uh, upon this picture and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two sisters. See what a grace was seated upon this brow, a form and a combination indeed, where the, every god did seem to set a seal to give a world assurance of a woman. This was your wife. Now look you what follows upon. This is your new toy. Blasting her sister like a mildewed ear. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this morning? I have you eyes. Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, or, or, or I have eyes, hands, smelling sounds all over that the sickly part of one true sense could not so move. Shame, where is thy blush? Oh, you salad. If thou canst mute me in a matron's bones, and let virtue be as wax, and, and, and then melt her flaming youth asunder. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and graven spots as will not leave their taint. Oh, a queen of shreds and patches. No more! Only with your wings, you heavenly gods. Alas, she's mad. How is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporeal air do hold discourse? No, 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 no. do you nothing see? No, 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 nothing, no, nothing here. No, nothing but ourselves. See, even now, how it goes, fair king in her habit. Even as she lived. See, even now, it goes out the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain, this bodiless creation. Ecstasy oh. is very cunning. Ecstasy. My pulse as yours so temperately keep time and healthful music makes. It is not madness I've uttered. Bring me to the test and I will the matter reword which madness who would gamble from. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rank. Oh, Hamlet. Thou have cleft my heart in twain. And then throw away the worser part, and live the better with the other half. Assume a virtue if you have it not. I do repent. Heaven hath charged this with me and me with this. Oh, but I must be their scourge and minister. Thou assured that if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life left in me to breathe that thou hast sent to me. Good night, mother. Back. so 
with us had we been there. Her liberty is full of threat to all, to you yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us, who should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt this mad woman. But so much was our love that we would not see what was most fit. And like the owner of a foul disease, to keep it from divulging, let it feed even on the tip of life. Where is she gone? To draw apart the body she hath killed? Or whom this very madness, like some ore among a mineral of metal's base, shows itself pure? She weeps for what is done. Dr. Gildenstern! Dr. Gildenstern! Friends both. Join you with some further aid. Hamlet in madness hath Polonia slain. Seek her out, speak fair, and bring the chapel into the body. I pray you, hasten this. Hamlet, where is Polonia? Supper. Where? Oh, now where she eats, but where she is eating? Certain politic convocation of worms are eating that, and I, your worm is your only emperor to, for diet. You see, we fat all creatures else to fat us. We fat ourselves for maggots. Alahaz. Man may fish with a worm that is eat of a king, and eat of that fish that is eat of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Oh, nothing. Only to show you how a king may go and progress through the guts of a planter. Where is Polonia? In heaven. Oh, you sent for her. If your messenger find her not there, seek her yourself in the other place. But if you not find her within this month, you shall know it's her as you go up the stairs into the lobby. She will wait till you come. Hamlet, this deed for thine especial safety, which we do tender, as we dearly grieve for that which, which thou hast done. For that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness, therefore prepare thyself. The associates ten, and everything is bent for solitary. I Good! It would be if thou knewest our purposes. Oh, I see a cherub that sees them. But come. For solitary. <sighs> solitary. Oh. Farewell, dear father. My loving father, Henry. <laughs> My mother. Mother and father is man and wife, man and wife is one flesh, and so my mother. The come <clears throat> for solitary.
<laughs> My sweet soul, as sin's true nature is, each toy seems but a prologue to some great miss. So full of artless jealousy is guilt that it spills itself on fear. daughter. <laughs> Lord, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. <laughs> God be at your table. Pray, let us have no words of this. But if they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine, and in the morning be time. I am made at your window to be your valentine. Then up she rose, donned her clothes, and up the chamber door. Let in the maid that out her maid never departed more. <laughs> Indeed, with Adam Elba, I'll make an end of it. Riches and bison charity, a lack and five for shame. Young girls will do it if they come to it by cunt, they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumble me, you promise me to wed. So what I had done by yonder sun, it's down I come to my bed. How long hath she been thus? <sighs> I hope all will be well. I must be patient. I cannot choose but weep. I think they should lay her in the cold ground. Their keys shall know of it. <laughs> so I thank you for your good counsel. <laughs> good night, ladies. <laughs> Sweet ladies. Stop. 
Steward that stole the master's daughter. Yes. This nothing's more than matter. Hey, here's Rosemary. But for remembrance, pray, love, remember. Pansies are for thought. Here's fennel for you. Columbines. friends you will, and they will judge twixt you and me. Be you content to lend us your patience a while, and we will jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Now, now, must your conscience, my acquaintance, see and you must put me in your heart for friend. So if you have heard and with a knowing ear, she which have noble Polonius slain pursuing my love. It will be. But tell me why you proceeded not against these feats, so capital and so crimeful in nature as by your safety, wisdom, all things else you made me were stirred up. For two special reasons. Which, yet to you, may seem much unsinewed, but to me they are quite strong. Hamlet's dear mother lives almost by her looks. And for myself, my virtue or my plague, be it either which. And as the star moves not but in this sphere, I could not but bite her. The other motive why to a public count I might not go is the great love the general gender bear Hamlet, who, dipping her faults in their affections, would like the spring that turneth wood to stone convert her gifts to graces so that mine arrows, too slightly timbered for so loud a wind, would have reverted back to me again, and not where I aimed them. So have I, noble friend, Sister, and in the desperate terms, whose worth if praises may go back against the challenger on the mount for all her perfections. But my revenge will come. Laertes, was Polonia dear to you? 
Or are you like face, or a pea, painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love Polonia, but that I know love is begun by time, and that I see in passages of proof. Time qualifies the spark and fire of it, but to the quick of the ulcer. Tomorrow, Hamlet comes back from solitary. What would you undertake to prove yourself worthy of revenge in deed more than in words? To cut her throat in the church. No place else should move your sanctuaries. Revenge should have no bounds. But good Laertes, will you do this? Stay close within your chamber. Hamlet having returned will know you are come back. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence, bring you in fine and wager on both your heads. When in your motion you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end. And that she calls for drink. I'll have prepared a chalice for the nonce, whereupon but sipping, our purpose may hold there. Let it be so. Under all the circumstances. Remember it, Hamlet? There was kind of fighting in me that would not let me sleep. He thought I lay worse than the mutinies on the bell bottoms. He rashly, and then praise, be rash as word, and sometimes let us know that our, our discretion serves, serves us well. And that had reminds us that there's a kind of divinity that shapes our ends. A few of them how we will. That is most certain. Stands it not. He hangs thee. Stands it not. We oh, know. She that hath killed my king, hath whored my mother, hath, hath popped between the election and my hopes, thrown out her proper ankle for my life. Such cousin is not, is not to be revenged with these hands, and is not to be damned to let this evil in our natures live in further conquer. Put your bonnet to its right use, just for the head. Oh. He thinks it's very sultry, it's a little half of my complexion. Indeed, this is very sultry, I swear I know not how. Hamlet, no. Claudia bade me signify to you that she hath laid a great wager on your head.
Sleep. He thought I lay worse than the mutinies on the billboards. <laughs> he rashly, and, and, and praise be rash as word, and sometimes let us know that our, our discretion serves, serves us well. And that, that reminds us that there's a kind of divinity that shapes our ends. A few of them, how we will. That is most certain. Stands it not. Thinks thee. Stands it not. Oh, you know. She that hath killed my king, hath whored my mother, hath, hath popped between the election and my hopes, thrown out her proper angle. For my life, such cousin she is not. It's not with these hands, and is not to be damned to let this evil in our natures live in for the kinker. Put your bonnet to its right use, just for the head. Oh. <laughs> Methinks it's very sultry, as a little half of my complexion. Indeed, this is very sultry, as for I know not how. And Hamlet, no. Claudia bade me signify to you that she hath laid a great wager on your head.
girl of most infinite gems, most excellent fancy. She has borne me on her back a thousand
dozen times. And now, <laughs> how horrid it is in my imagination, my gorge rises. songs <laughs> and flashes of merriment that were watch us at the whole table on a roar. <laughs> Not that now. It's a mark your own grin. <laughs> Quick, <laughs> Sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Don't. And that was our show for you. <laughs>